Hello class, this is Miss Augustine, and we are continuing with our Gas Laws, Chapter 12, and today we're going to talk about Charles and Gayla Sachs laws, two new laws. So first, let's talk about Charles. Uh, Jacques Charles was a French physicist, and he was the first to fill a balloon with hydrogen gas and make a solo flight. Now, hydrogen gas has a molar mass of 2 grams per mole, so it is significantly less dense than air, and as such, it would float. Um, the reason that this is problematic is hydrogen gas is very, 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 very flammable, and if there was any friction or spark, it would have exploded in a blaze of glory, and Jacques Charles would have died. Fortunately, he made his solo flight and lived. So he uh, did experiments uh, looking at how the volume of a gas changes as temperature changes. And what he showed was that the volume of a gas increases when the temperature increases. And this would be at constant pressure. So Charles's law, I like to e um, equate with flying a hot air balloon. So if you think about it, I don't know if you've ever been in a hot air balloon, but the way they work is you um, have a balloon and they have a heat gun, usually a flame gun, and they heat up the air. And as the air increases in temperature, its volume increases. So the volume of the air inside of the hot air balloon is less dense than the air around it. And the way hot air balloons work is at the very top, there's an opening that's controlled by a flap. And if they are going too high, what they do is they open up the flap and cold air rushes in, it becomes more dense, and it comes down. And then if they want to increase elevation, go up higher, they um, fire their flame gun, and the volume increases. Again, density is less than air, and it goes up. So they control the height in that way. And if you think about it, when you fly a hot air balloon um, during a regular day over a few hours, the pressure doesn't change that much. So you can think about Charles's law is a situation where you're at constant pressure, and volume and temperature are varying. So here are some measurements as temperature increases, uh, increases, sorry, wrong direction, the volume increases. So as the temperature goes from negative 200 to 270, the volume goes from 100 milliliters to almost 1100 milliliters. So as the temperature goes up, the volume goes up. So that is a direct linear relationship. And what Charles noted was that when the volume of a gas is zero, it corresponds to a temperature of negative 273.15 degrees C. So what Charles did was he noticed that as temperature drops, volume drops, and it's a linear relationship. And he repeated these experiments with every gas he had available to him. So here you'll see a variety of gases. And what he noted was that the temperature where the volume is zero for gases is always negative 273.15 degrees C. So that's how the value for absolute zero was determined, noticing that as the volume goes to zero, that always corresponds to zero volume corresponds to a temperature of negative 273.15. So now Charles's law, the volume of a gas is directly proportional to the temperature. And you'll see I wrote here in hot pink that temperature must be converted to Kelvin. So in this relationship, volume over temperature is equal to some constant. And that constant has to do with the amount of gas that you're measuring. And so V1 over T1 is equal to V2 over T2. So volume at temperature 1 and volume at temperature 2. And we can rearrange that equation by cross multiplying to V1 T2 equals V2 T1. So when we're solving Charles' law problems, we're talking about a specific quantity of a gas and we look at initial volume and initial temperature 
versus final volume and final temperature. So again, since the um, denominators can be problematic, it's easier to solve for these problems by rearranging the equation to V1 T2 equals V2 T1, where the ones are the initial conditions and the two are the final conditions. And again, temperature must be converted to Kelvin. Why? Well, if you recall that previous slide, where the volume is zero corresponds to that absolute zero. So if you were to use degree C instead of Kelvin, you could solve for a negative value of volume, and that is kind of a meaningless thing. So now, the second law, which is very similar to Charles's law, is Gay-Lussac's law. Joseph Gay-Lussac discovered that the pressure of a gas is also directly proportional to the Kelvin temperature when the volume is constant. So my example here is if you had a can, let's say you had a can of, I don't know, hairspray. The can has constant volume. You know intuitively that you shouldn't stick a can of hairspray into the oven, for instance, and turn the oven to a high temperature, because as the temperature increases, so does the pressure. And eventually, the pressure exceeds what the can can contain because it's constant volume. So therefore it would go boom. So Gay-Lussac's law explains why you shouldn't heat a closed can. So the pressure of a gas is directly proportional to the temperature at constant volume. So again here P1 pressure 1 over T1 temperature 1 is equal to P2 pressure 2 over T2 temperature 2 and we can rearrange that by cross multiplying as P1 T2 equals P2 T1 and again temperature must be converted to Kelvin or you will be finding yourself solving for a negative value of pressure and obviously a negative value of pressure would be meaningless. So now I wanted to summarize. So the summary of these three gas laws, boil, which is constant temperature, P1 V1 equals P2 V2, that would be the equation we use, Charles's law, constant pressure, remember think about flying around in a hot air balloon, the pressure doesn't change much, so Charles's law is the constant pressure situation, V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2, or V1 T2 equals V2 T1, and Gay-Lussac's law is the constant volume. This is why you don't heat a can um, in uh, an oven because, again, or you don't throw a can into an incinerator, a fire, because constant volume is the situation and P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2. As the temperature goes up, the pressure goes up, it would explode. So that's how you kind of keep these things straight. Boyle, I don't have an explanation for. Charles explains a hot air balloon. Gay-Lussac's law explains why we don't heat closed containers. And remembering that all of these laws refer to a specific quantity of gas. So we're not changing the number of moles of the gas for these. So for now, this is Miss Augustine signing off.